if you think I had an exhilarating week last week, wait till you watch this week. I have given four animes my two thumbs up. To find out what those four are, well, timestamp below. But if not, keep on watching, and I am very sure this particular digest will make your anime week. Alright? So, mga lifestyle, welcome. Welcome to another episode reviews digest. Apareranman episode 6. Okay. So, the race is on. Okay. So, we now, well, we now know that Team Apare, okay, that Team Apare finished last, right? Mainly because they got, uh, they got knocked off by another, <clears throat> by another competitor who happens to be Richard Riesman. I was apologetic after the race. And of course, one, the one who got pole position was Dylan, then TJ, then I think Jalianyat. Uh, Jalianyata. But anyway, silang one two. You might pit na magkatunggalin na na parati ng papa tayo tuy na gigita. Okay. So there's a lull. Okay. <clears throat> the actual race started at midnight. Okay. Kumaga twelve hours from that. The actual race started at midnight. Now, of course, Dylan Dylan went first. Okay. But Hototo, the um the Indian, the Indian sidekick ni Apare decided to go on his own kasi gusto siya talaga maghiganti sa mga sagan ni Gil the Snake. Okay. Si Gil the Butcher, the one with the hideous mask. Okay. He's one of the competitors also, he's one of the racers also. So he found out that may May binabalak pa lang masama ang gang ni Gil to, uh, for the race. They plan to cut the other racers off dun sa entrance into Death Valley. Right? With dynamite. Now, wala silang pakailang kung sino madamay dun. Okay? According to his henchman, shit happens. Holy fuck. Alright? It's a holy, it's, it's a what the fuck moment. It's basically a what the fuck moment. Ototo was able to escape. Okay? Escape with his life actually, okay, to be to be honest. He, es he almost he escaped with his life. So he warns Apare who was <laughs> who was still who did not actually start the race until he made some more modifications kasi ang reason niya the, ra the the other racers would be driving slowly kasi gabi. It's the um Dutcha Dutcha nag repair sa starting line. It's the dead of night. Syempre nag-iingat din yung mga yon. So he, he took his time. He did not actually cross the cross the starting line. <laughs> did not actually he deliberately not cross the starting line kasi umano pa siya. Modify modify pa siya ganoon. So but deep in his heart, he knows that um, Hototo will come will come back. Hinana pa siya ni ni Kosame. Hinana pa ni ni Kosame si Hototo. So they eventually found out na may plano nga si Gil na ganon. So sabi, sabi ni Apare, not happening. Okay, they will be the first. He aims to he aims to thwart he aims to thwart Gil's plans. At nagtaka si nagtaka si Kosame. Pano? Death Valley. You know what Apare said? That's the last line. This vehicle's been reborn. Whoa! 
Ooh. Okay? I don't know. I don't know what he did to that car. Okay? Pero nakita naman natin he made some modifications. I don't know what he did to make it uh, to make it faster or to be more efficient on fuel. But we will find out in the next episode. All right? To have a um, to have a hardened criminal like Gil in in the in the roster of in the roster of racers, okay, it scares the shit out of me. It scares the shit out of me. I say, manami siyang manami siyang pwedeng gawin sa mga sa mga sa mga bida natin. Eh. He has uh, he's got he's got dirty thoughts in his mind. That's that's for sure. He has dirty thoughts in his mind, and he's up to no good. Okay, he is up to no good, and this episode reveals that. Now, one thing is left uh, unsolved. Okay, sino talaga sa mga sino sa sa mga sa gang ni Gil, okay, yung personal gang niya ang pumatay sa mga magulang ni Hototo. Okay, Hototo wasn't able to find out. Okay. He wasn't able to find out, and well, they got a new, they got a new member of their crew. What's what is that animal? Ah, <laughs> uh, a prairie dog? A prairie dog with a mohawk? <laughs> a prairie dog with a fucking mohawk? You don't see that every day. So, a hey, um. Wow, uh, a semi unexpected twist to the story. Okay, I can't wait to see the next episode. So, Aparelan man episode six, thumbs up. All right, the plot twist. Okay, the plot twist is what uh, is what actually uh, saved this episode. All right, I was supposed to give it two thumbs up, pero <clears throat> the scenes didn't warrant me to give it. To give it the two thumbs, two thumbs up. So one thumb up lang, right? As great an anime as Aparelan Man is, so ang gandun lang muna. We have to, we have to see, we have to see the next episode para uh, magjustify natin kung talag kung ma magage natin kung if I misrated this episode or not. Okay, so. Aparelan Man Episode 6 Thumbs up We'll just have to wait for the next episode Peter Quill and the Philosopher's Time Episode 5 I've got mixed feelings about this episode His twist with the help is done Alright His twist with the help is done Now He's now being arranged to marry the, um, the supposed daughter of the leader of the Orc Nation. Its official name is United Pork Pie Kingdom. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? All right. <laughs> um, okay. It still Peter Grill still makes me laugh my ass off. All right. I got. I got to hand it to them. But United Pork Pie Kingdom. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? Take it to the story. He's being arranged to marry this girl, okay? who is the um, the leader, who is the daughter of the leader of the uh, the Orc Nation, and and its official, which has that official name, okay, serious official name for a for a kingdom I have ever heard, okay. I'll tell you honestly. Now, so they went to they went to, they went to this particular town, and Peter entirely thought that the one. <clears throat> that the female orc behind him was the one he's going to marry. He was totally convinced that, it, that there's no way I'm going to marry this girl. Pero, may pumasok sa pinto, inintroduce ng, ng orc leader yung anak niya. Si Piglet. Okay. Ah, really cute name. Okay. Who would ever think she's an orc? Okay? The only thing orc about her are her ears. If this is what repulsive looks like, 
Okay, I'm marrying her. <laughs> Tenga ng baboon. <laughs> but besides that, wow. All right, she's both cute and sexy. I uh, am no, no, cute and hot. All right. And for the first time, Peter is taking a liking to her. All right. Ogre sisters, nope. The elf, nope. But to piglet, ooh. May, may crush siya. Okay? May crush si Peter. Okay? Yan pala ang complication na. <clears throat> now, now, Novella's father-in-law is with him. Okay? So, not only is he, is he scary as fuck, he is also a conniving son of a bitch. Up to now, he scares the shit out of me. He will do everything just to separate his daughter from Peter. I don't know why why he doesn't like Peter, right? He is the champion. Peter is the champion of his guild, okay? The strongest warrior on the planet. And you don't you don't like him to marry your daughter? Holy shit! I, for me, it's up to now. I'm still I'm still clueless as to. What the guildmaster's intentions are? Why is he, uh, why is he so pissed off at Peter? All right, hasn't he, has he, hasn't he done, hasn't he done everything just to, just to please him, just to, uh, just to prove his love for, for his daughter? All right, he hires three thugs to attack Piglet, but I know. But I'm I, I am very sure. Na uh, well, tagalongin ko na. Alam niya na makikilam si Peter. All right, and Peter did. Sempre. Uh, there's a there's a dancer in distress. He's a knight. That's his duty. So takes takes them all three out. Tinaasi piglet. So, takbo Peter, takbo. <laughs> so piglet in return. So, um, uh, volunteered to so be his consort for the day because he because she wants to see uh, she wants to see the whole town. She even asked Peter to to give her a tour of the town. Right <clears throat> now, later in the episode, Peter expressed his um, his disgust for the entire marriage proposal thing. Okay, so the orc leader. Well, maybe we can work. Maybe um, maybe we can we can plan something out. So, unbeknownst to Peter, pinagsama sila ni Piglet sa isang kwarto. Okay, the guildmaster himself accompanied Peter to that room. So, by binalaan pa si Peter, he gave the guildmaster gave Peter a warning. I hope you do not make an error in judgment on this. Abay, sino ba nagpa-plano? <laughs> sino ba nagpa-plano na paghiwalayin, paghiwalayin, paghiwalayin yung anak mo at saka si Peter? Di ba ikaw? <laughs> you, you ask me, he shouldn't, he shouldn't, uh, what you call it? He shouldn't, he shouldn't get pissed off when Peter actually impregnates this girl. He shouldn't get mad because it was his idea all along. So the episode ended with well, Piglet on reluctantly, um, reluctantly seducing Peter. Okay, this is how the episode ended. So, okay, that was a good that was, that was a good revelation episode. Now we know how how the how much uh, how much hate the Guildmaster has over Peter, over the uh, over the lead. Okay, over our uh, over our over our favorite womanizer. <laughs> so, well, because of the uh, incredible twist this uh, this episode this episode had, okay, in introducing the fourth oh the fifth woman in Peter's life. All right, Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time. Thumbs up. Okay. Um, I was supposed to give it two thumbs up, but I wasn't satisfied with how much, uh, with the amount of humor it it brought 
this time. Yeah. Um, well, the humor is there, okay? Vintage Peter, vintage Peter Grill. All right, the humor is there, but bitin, okay? We Filipinos call it bitin. So, one thumb up to this particular episode of Peter Grill, right? But hey, don't get me wrong. It's still a good anime. It's a, well, it's a man's anime, okay? It is a man's anime. And I don't give a shit what, what, uh, what, you, what you boys would say, all right? You ain't a real man if you don't if if you can't stomach Peter Grill, okay? So can't wait for the next episode. GB8 episode four. Wow. Okay. So Brian gets Brian gets uh, put down finally. Kasi uh, ganap na siyang GBA by one of his uh, one of his closest. One of his closest friends had to do it. I see he was about to attack Dr. Yoshinaga. <clears throat> it, was a, it was a sad moment. But here's the thing. Since Sui also showed his artistic side. I say Meron siyang ugali na, na naipakita dito that whenever a weapon of his gets broken or it comes yeah, he, he's fresh from a battle. He plays that Japanese guitar. Kasi nakakita siya ng, ng ganun on display sa isang museum. He plays it. <clears throat> As an offering to to his broken weapon. Di ba nga naputol yung samurai na, yung, yung katana na, gam, na ginamit niya nung last episode. Okay? He offered a song to it. Kasi parang parang namatayan. Parang ganun eh. Okay? So it's a it's a it's um it's a samurai's way of saying goodbye to to his uh, to his fallen weapon. So he's done with that. Then all of a sudden they couldn't find Kathleen's mom, yung doktora. So they look for her inside that building that has a museum. <clears throat> and lo and behold, mapaglaro talaga ang tadhana. She dis- the doctor dis- uh, Kagli's mother discovers a samurai exhibit hindi nga makapaliwala since we wah 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 no so yung tatlong barako okay the, uh, the three the three warriors uh, went into that exhibit and to their surprise they saw their former weapons okay <clears throat> All of them, all of those weapons are on display. Lahat ng mga weapons na ginamit nila nung panahon nila. Weapons that they actually own are all in that exhibit. Okay? I don't know if you can call it coincidence, but wow. Okay? Sinabi nga ni, ni Yuki Noja na nung, nung monk, what an incredible twist of fate. <laughs> He got his war club, his war club back. Of course, yung mga gamit ni Kenroko as a shinobi, yung mga pang ninja na gear, pati armor, pati yung weapons, everything. Everything that he used during that war. And most especially, si Sensui. All his three swords na ginagamit niya kasi <clears throat> we all found out in this episode that he's actually a dual wielder. He's not just good with he's not just good with just one sword. He's good with both. Dalawa ang hawak. He is deadlier that he is deadlier pag dalawa hawak niya. So, nakita niya dalawang yung dalawang katana niya, okay? These are these weapons on exhibit. Remember, they are actually their possessions. Actual possessions nila 'yon and then ended up in a museum. Okay? Strange coincidence talaga. So, dalawang katana at yung isang broadsword. Ito pa lang si Sensui. <clears throat> His fighting style combines both samurai and barbarian. Okay? Or, they are both samurai and barbarian in origin. Ganun, kaya ganun pala siya kabagsik. His fighting style incorporates both samurai and barbarian techniques. 
okay? He will either he will either cut your head off or smash you into pieces. <laughs> he has a choice or he can do both. He can do both. <clears throat> so, okay, the usual. They're they're suddenly surrounded by Jibia and it's night time. And here comes Setsui! <laughs> So they they smash their way through those Jibia, especially Sensui. Now that he has he has his he's reunited with his three swords. Wow! Lumabas lalo ang pangkadimonyo niya. Okay, that look in his eyes. Lumabas uli. So he started cutting cutting those Jibia's heads off. But at one moment, no meron siya pinugutan ng ulo na Jibia. Yung parang dub. Eh ako why? Eh ko bakit kulay Bakit parang lava yung itsura ng dugo ng mga Jibia, ano? Okay? The Jibia, that Jibia, that particular Jibia's blood um spat onto him on his face. So, a few several seconds later he's not feeling well. Okay? <clears throat> But just in time, Dr. Yoshinaga and uh and the rest of the rest of their contingent Uh, came to the rescue para i- itakas na sila uh, with a camper. He wasn't feeling well. Nakaratay dun sa, sa loob ng camper si Sensui. Then, several uh, flashback moments uh, were shown during the, the last parts of the episode. The last parts of the episode through Ken Roku. Okay. Ito pala si Ken Roku at si Sensu- Sensui. Muntik na talaga magpatayan tong dalawang to. During the war, during the, the war they left. <clears throat> uh, of course, Kenno was a shinobi, and Sensui was the most feared samurai. Then, the slayer of a thousand, ang alias niya, and for good reason. Now we know why. <laughs> Now we know why. What a dual wielder, pala. So, uh, it it ended in a standstill, and well, I don't know how. How that ended in a standstill? Because ah, ako napunod ko. Uh, Ken Roku was, lumalabas Ken Roku was was uh, just sized Sensui up. He figured, I can't beat this guy right now. <laughs> I cannot beat this guy. He's to, he's, he's, he's formidable if not invincible. Parang ganon yung mindset niya. So the episode ended. They were being surrounded by GBA again. And they have one man down, si Sensui pa. <laughs> so Ken Roku and Yuk and uh, Yukino Yukinoja ba yon? Yukinoja the monk. So sila dalawa na talaga ang haharap sa mga Jibia ngayon. And Ito na paligiran na sila. Gan- uh, he issued a grim statement. He, he said that to say we're all gonna die here. <laughs> Because yung mga lizard, yung mga lizard looking Jibia, um, hinahabol sila. Tapos meron pa mga flyers. Yung mga flying Jibia pa na humahabol din sa kanila. Na which got them surrounded on a on a flyover. It's a bad place to be in. <laughs> pag pag ganun ang scenario, it's a bad place to be in. So <clears throat> I couldn't wait for the next episode. Or what's going to happen? What's going to happen if these two are going uh, will be able to hold out this this many this this many Jibia without Sensui's help? Okay. So Jibia episode four. Thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. I couldn't give the two thumbs up yet because well, that was just my opinion, you canina, on on what on why. Kenroko did not push through with his attack on Sensui. Uh, that was that was just my opinion, but that's a, for me that's a fact yet unresolved. So maybe further down the line they're going to resolve that in a fight. Okay, these are two proud warriors, Sensui and Kenroko. They are two proud warriors, so they will resolve that in uh, in a duel. If not a fight to the death, okay, not a fight. To, I hope it's not a fight to the death. <laughs> 
because this anime needs them. <laughs> so, yeah, yun na muna. GDI episode 4, thumbs up. Okay? So, let's wait for the next episode. Let's wait for the next episode. But overall, it's a, it's a good episode. We've seen... Uh, well, uh, we've seen uh, a flashback moment. It's a, it's a good flashback moment. Okay, don't let, don't get me wrong. It's a good flashback moment. Okay, so, wow. Okay, it, it helped me to. It someone held me to the edge of my bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Out of high school episode 5. Wow, okay. Mori has his own semi final match. Oops, my bad. Forgive me for um, pardon, pardon me, okay. Pardon me for uh, what you call this getting the story all wrong in the previous episode. Sinabi ko don na I that, that Mori is automatically seated in the finals. But episode 5 proved me wrong. Kasi meron pa siya nakakalabang sa semifinals. Okay? He beat, he beat that convincingly. Okay? He won that convincingly. So, finals, Mori versus Daiwi. Mori became a bit of a dirty player. Okay? And he showed that during the first part of the match. Then, binalita sa kanya na, binalita sa kanya na namatay na best friend niya. Despite the, um, the assistance from uh, from the organizing committee okay. they were they were about to treat him the uh, the, na the nanotechnology BS but it was too late okay. he still passed away so binalita nila kay Daiwi yon, and all of a sudden he's a he becomes a demoralized piece of shit right so ah punch kick punch kick that's all that's all Mori was doing until uh, Mira stepped in and uh, gave Daiwi a letter na sinulat ng namatay niyang kaibigan and basically the letter said fight for your own sake now and well nabuhayan ng loob si Daiwi and Mori well while, 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 while all this was happening, okay, here's the funny part. While all this was happening, he was. Mori is mocking the referee. <laughs> he was given the yellow card, okay, warning na yon, okay. In soccer, uh, if you're given the yellow card, if you're shown the yellow card, that's a warning from the referee. Okay? Even, in, even in this anime, the yellow card means warning, right? He was already heckling it, because he has nothing to do but heckle the referee. <laughs> The funny looking referee. So, yun na, nung na realize na, boy, okay. Daiwi is ready to fight again. About time. Ganya sarimi niya. And, to, to my surprise, Daiwi was smiling. Okay? Parang, ano eh, parang, parang nabunut na siya ng tinik. Okay? Because his friend is gone, and through a letter, he. Uh, his friend releases him from his vow of, yun nga. Um, doing entering uh, entering this tournament just for his sake kasi eh, syempre malaki ang bayarin sa hospital and uh, he was he was a true friend so now that he's gone he says in the letter do what you basically do what you have to do fight for your fight for your fight for your own sake so on with the match Pack! fight went back and forth they were throwing secret arts at each other until Daiwi um, uses uh, a combination a combination move from his four stances. He almost ringed out Mori until boom! Mori shows his ultimate secret art. Jim Mori, Jim Mori original. Blue Dragon Kick! Oo! 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 nakita yun! Jin Mori Original Blue Dragon Kick! Then, shoots, shoots, shoots that at Daiwi. Boom! Daiwi's down. 
he loses <laughs> and and that move of Mo and Mori took half the ring with with that move of his nearly half the ring so he wins the prelimin he he becomes champion of the preliminaries he goes on to the national tournament but lo and behold okay two new rivals okay? two new rivals have have been teasered in this uh in this episode okay now what does the future hold for for these three the three the three leads who are obviously who are obviously real friends now okay who are obviously real friends now and wow um this show is capable of anything now in the final part um Dai we said Dai we paid his last respects kasi can remake pala yung can remake pala yung best friend niya so it's in a columbarium all right Woo! i almost forgot it's in a columbarium kasi that's 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 the that's the usual resting place the usual final resting place for uh, cremated bodies so nasa urn lang yon ilalagay mo doon okay it's called the columbarium right fact fact for you mga ka lifestyle okay so he left he was leaving the columbarium si kasi may ano yun eh, may, uh, depending on the design but for that for that particular uh, resting place may meron siyang maliit na door naka tape doon yung picture nilang tatlo kumbaga they were Mori and Mira were helping out were helping Daiwi walk out of the ring they were help, they were actually helping him out of the ring okay sign of good sportsmanship okay there's a big lesson there's a big lesson in sportsmanship in this episode so you gotta watch it right so you know nakalagay um he already has new friends ha 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 uh it's the most touching moment prop not just for this episode but for the entire anime for the entire show okay so yeah this episode is a very good lesson in sportsmanship and friendship right it's a uh, uh wow okay i never thought i never thought god of high school would be a lesson in sportsman in both friendship and sportsmanship because it's over the top action the fight scenes bodies flying everywhere <laughs> secret tech secret techniques being shown outrageous okay it's a, it's so it's so far an outrageous anime but it's so fucking fun to watch so action packed so okay cloud of high school episode five two thumbs up <laughs> two thumbs up say hindi ko na expect yung ano eh. Hindi ko na expect yung uh, ganong ending sa God of High School, where one of the lead characters shows is well shows absolutely his human side. And again, uh, this anime continues to amaze me. <laughs> it continues to amaze me. Right? It amazes me, but it amazes me episode by episode. So yeah, I repeat, God of High School episode five, two thumbs up. You know, you got uh, two rivals had have been teasered in this episode, so I can't wait for the next one. Just can't wait for the next one. Decadence episode five. Wow. Okay. The show's first overkill moment. For an avatar, he is vicious. I never thought. Kaburagi would be that vicious when it comes to Gadol. Okay, when it comes to well, is his avatar form? <laughs> so we were left from the previous episode that was um, Natsume is going to experience her real first 
real battle with without <laughs> Kaburagi, her boss. Then in the heat, in the middle of um uh what's it called this battling the um the Gadol Alpha. The Gadol Alpha, okay. I'm gonna I'm going to explain later why I did this for Gadol Alpha. He suddenly interferes, right? And he says, Didn't I tell you you're not ready? He proves his point, okay? He rubs it, he rubs it into Natsumi again. But they weren't able what well, I don't know. I say Inuna Munilim rescue mga kasama ni Natsume who were getting decimated by this Gadol Alpha. So nilabas muna ni Natsume, tinulungang makatakas until until Kabu is left all alone with this wow, okay? With this god level monster supposedly. He ex he shows he shows to everyone how vicious he can be with Gadol. Okay? Pinagtutuhog niya ang Gadol Alpha na to hanggang sa namatay. Hanggang sa napatay niya. Okay? Wow. Okay? If this doesn't pass as an overkill moment to you, I don't know what is. I don't know what is. Then, halan ng lahat. Halan ng lahat. Tapos na. All of a sudden, this this hideous and huge Gadol boss comes out of that um, uh, of that hive. I can I can call it a hive because dun talaga nang gagaling yung lahat ng Gadol. It's so hideous and somewhat OP. Okay. Decadence was already getting ready to to position the uh, the cannon. Their main weapon, yung parang parang nagsishape into a fist na ganun. Iyak na video ano? Yung main weapon. Sobrang laki. They were getting ready and then dinaplisan na sila ng main weapon ng Gadol boss. Okay. <laughs> Alright. This can actually it can actually destroy the fortress. Yung decadence. So, uh, medyo na demoralize si Natsume. Then, all of a sudden, Kabu, Kabu goes hero again. So, the figure out niya na, if I can, he figures out like, if I can destroy one of its sacks, maybe I can, hmm, maybe I can weaken its, maybe I can weaken, maybe I can weaken it somewhat. Ganun nga nangyari. He went for the, I think, I think probably the largest sack. Okay? Nandito. In its underbelly. Yun ang tinarget niya. Yun ang pinaputok niya. So, it, uh, it builds pressure from, it builds pressure from within its body. Then it fires. The, um, it fires the, um, parang, it's like a water knife. Okay? If you don't know what the water knife looks like, Para siyang, uh, para siyang jigsaw, pero ang pumuputol dun sa ako ay tubig. Okay? High velocity. Okay? Ganon yung, ganon yung itsura ng sinushoot out ng, ng boss, gad, ng gadol boss na to. Okay? It's like a water knife, only uh, probably a thousand times more powerful. More, a thousand times faster. Ganon. Ganong a deadly. So he was able to relieve some uh, relieve some of the pressure. So pin pinutok niya yung isang sack. So when the Gadol boss fired, when the Gadol boss fired its weapon, medyo humina. Medyo humina yung dating. So hindi niya natulo yun ng decadence. So decadence was able to fire the cannon. So, kumbaga, eh, I think, I think the Gadol boss went desperate and shot its own head. <laughs> Unfortunately, it shot it into the punch itself. So, nadali ng decadence yung Gadol boss. Okay? Here's one thing. Here's one uh, thing that happened in real life. Okay? Tandaan nyo, 
the human world is already um, virtual in nature. The one that is happening uh, in actuality is the one that's uh, between the, between the cyborgs. Okay, here's what happened. Here's what actually happened. Kabu um, completely rewrote the storyline nung pinatay niya yung Gadol Alpha. He completely changed the storyline. Kaya lumabas yung Gadol Boss na yun as a, kumpaka, parang um, safety net of the original storyline. Lumabas. Okay? Napatay din nila. Okay? Napatay din nila lahat yung Gadol Boss na yun. So, nagbago na yung story. Akala na lahat tapos na. So, in comes a new storyline wherein they have to now deal with more of this giant gadol. Kasi dati, madalang lang silang... Madalang lang ito eh, lumalabas. Ngayon, uh, mas marami na sila ngayon. Okay? So, this completely uh, disappointed kumbaga, yung High Council na, na, na nag-designate kay Kaburagi as the, as the recovery agent. Okay? So, pinadampot nila si Kaburagi and in order for him to to make up for his mistakes, he has to recite those, those, uh, that phrase na, the world uh, needs the world needs to get rid of bugs. Parang ganun na ano eh. Pero iba sinabi niya. Iba sinabi niya. The world needs bugs. So, pinatay siya rito ah. Yung Marshall na nadadampot sa kanya executes him. Right? After all he's done, after all he's done to completely change um, completely change uh, his comrades' way of life, give them a sense of um, what you call this? A sense of positivity. Kasi dalawang Dalawa malalaking gadol yung dinali nila eh. So that would, that would mean a victory for them. After all is done, um, he gets executed. Okay? Although malayo ng, malayo ng, ano eh, malayo ng pinakita. Siyempre, what? It has to, it has to keep itself as awesome as possible. You can actually show that. Okay? But, judging from the way it looked from afar, Talagang, talagang ano eh, talagang tinumba siya. Talagang pinatumba na siya eh. So, final scene ended, uh, the, the episode ended with him sprawled on the floor. Lifeless. Nakadilat. Namatay na nakadilat. Si Kaburagi. Okay? How will, how will uh, Natsume go on? Kasi si Kaburagi na, and parang na siya kay Natsume eh. He told her, he told her to, to take care of Pipe. Yung malit na gado, yung parang pet nila. So, let's read it. Two thumbs up. Right? Although, I was expecting uh, the higher ups of the, of the cyborgs to, to punish, uh, to, to to punish Kabo for what he did. I say this is ano eh, what he did was was totally was totally outside protocol. Was totally outside of his protocols. Of anyone's of any cyber protocols for that matter. Okay? Tinamper niya yung storyline. Tinamper niya yung storyline just to save Natsume. So I think I think it was the most human character out there. He well he is the most human character, the most human character in this show, in this anime, right? So yeah, medyo malo, medyo malo ko yung ending, but I was expecting that. But I, w- I was expecting, actually, I was expecting the the head of the cyborgs to punish him, kasi talaga malalain ginawa niya. Pero to actually, uh, for Kaburagi to actually piss them off like this para i-execute siya on the spot. Wow. Okay. That's that is clearly an act of defiance. 
just goes to show you how much he has had enough of of this kind of life this kind of system that's going on this kind of um all this monotony this monotony that's going on so yeah he was willing to die for it and he was pre and he was actually prepared here and here to die for it so that that uh compelled me to give the two thumbs up for this episode of decadence Super Hexeros episode six. Oh my god. Woo! It's nothing short of uh wow. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> okay. Vintage Super Hexeros uh, when it comes to the comedy when it comes to, co to the comedic part, alright? Imagine having a um a mutated Kisichu in your in in the Hexeros, in the Hexeros household, okay? The Hexeros household. Observation. Dalawa na silang walang hinaharap sa, sa bahay ng mga Super Hexeros. <laughs> Dalawa na silang walang hinaharap. If you, if you know what I mean. Who is very eager to boost everybody's H energy. Okay? <laughs> <clears throat> it got pretty wild. <laughs> Talagang wild. Alright. Oh my god. Um uh but here's the thing Hoshino uh, he, he, Cha Cha actually had trouble um what you call this boosting Hoshino and Angel right Angel because well uh he just couldn't admit that the source of his H energy is Hoshino same thing for Hoshino. She, she just couldn't confess her feelings to Enjo. That's why, medyo nalilimit yung talagang power niya. Although she can, although she can control it to some degree na. Especially when she got into a jealous, a jealous fit. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> niya kasi there's uh, something going on between Cha Cha and Angel. Oh my God, that scene is cool. Oh, that was wild. All right, that was wild. The sh the the bathroom, the bat scene. Woo! <clears throat> so Hoshino the, the next day encountered Akisichu. Uh, mukang ane mukang mukang moth. She was able to take it. She was able to disable it, pero at a price. Ito kasi yung kisicho na nagkokos ng uh, infantile regression sa mga victims niya. Now, Hoshino, in a way, becomes its latest victim after defeating it. Yung, kumbagay, parang uh, liquid na lumabas sa, lumabas sa kisicho na yun, tumansik kay Hoshino, and she now has infantile regression. For the next 24 hours, she is acting like a total kid. Okay? Ngayon, all hell almost broke loose because Enjo knew what's going to happen. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs>
Siege! <clears throat> Hoshino went back to being the horniest kid in school. Okay? Ganon, ganon yung, ganon yung, uh, ganon yung ugali niya nung, nung mga bata pa sila. Right? She went back to that. Being uh, the most, uh, yeah, being the horniest kid in school. Right? So after 24 hours, ayun, medyo eh, bumaling na siya sa dati. And parang, parang bali wala. Parang, parang walang nangyari. Parang, ano, yun nga. Um, she went back to the Hoshino that just couldn't, just couldn't, uh, just, just couldn't open up to Enjo. Okay. And of course, uh, Enjo naman, nagpipigil. <laughs> nagpipigil kasi batang isip eh. Hindi niya pwede, hindi niya pwede isang mandalain eh. <laughs> hindi niya pwede isang mandalain. Batang isip eh. Alright? It's, it's ungentle, it's ungentleman of the guy. Okay? It's ungentleman for any guy. Okay? To take advantage of, to take advantage of uh, such an uh, affliction. Such a, such a mental affliction. It's uncalled for when, when it's uncalled for for guys. Even in the real world. Chacha is now, Chacha is still trying her best to to work something up between those two. Right? You know, yung nakikita ko sa episode na to. But, um, wow, okay. Overall, you know what? Super Hex, with this episode, Super Hexoros is now, uh, as now one up Peter Grill when it comes to the humor parts. <laughs> All right? So Super Hexeros episode 6, two thumbs up. All right? Two thumbs up. The humor that is Super Hexeros, wow. Blew my mind, okay? The humor parts of this episode absolutely blew my mind. Wide open. It busted my senses wide open. <laughs> Uh, well, I hope uh, the issue gets resolved. Yung yung pag hindi pag amin pag hindi pag amin nila sa isa't isa because it is important. Eh. You have it's um, what's called it Angel's uncle, the somewhat uh, effeminate, their effeminate commander, uncle ni Angel yun. Eh. I think he found it imperative talaga to. Or Chacha to help to help all the Hexeros, uh, to help the entire Hexeros team out, para maboost yung mga yung mga H energy nila. Kasi Chacha wants to get them ready for her, her mother, the Queen, right? They have to be in their peak form. Now, in the end of the episode, nagreport si nagreport si Uncle, nagreport si Uncle sa Tokyo branch, which is the head office. Kasi tadamo. Tandaan nyo guys, tandaan nyo mga ka-lifestyle. We're only dealing with just one branch of the Hexeros team. Right? That's that's what that's what we found out in this episode. We're just the the team that's featured in this anime, it's just a branch. Okay? Those five consist of a, just a branch, the Saitama branch of the uh, the Earth Defense Force. We're talking about now In the last part of the episode, may pinakita pang apat doon na naka na naka zero gear din. Pero hindi pinakita yung mga mukha. So that means uh, the anime will be introducing four more. But this time, it's from the Tokyo branch. So I'm excited, okay? It's a good um uh, it's a good teaser. It's a good teaser for the next episode. So wow. Okay. If if the Saitama branch was this exciting, is this exciting? I want to see how the Tokyo branch operates. All right? Kasi ap, may apat pang pakikilala sa next episode. So yeah. Again, Super Hexeros episode 6. Two thumbs up. <laughs> so, let's wait for the next episode, mga lifestyle. I just can't wait. I just cannot wait for this anime to make me laugh my ass off again. <laughs> oh.
Araw-araw aga ako ng Railgun, Season 3, Episode 18. Shall I call this the, um... Um... The breast check episode? <laughs> Because... This was the theme of the episode! Ang galing yun sa akin, Dama! So... Mikoto was Mikoto meets a girl named um, Kinuhata uh, from she's from a group I I don't know what I don't know how that group's going to figure in this arc pero they met uh, while they met uh, they met at a street ped uh, at a peddler who is peddling dream cards yung pinapatong kung esper ka pinapatong sa ulo para na yung habang natutulog ka and you're going to dream they're going, you're going to dream the dreams of the creator of that card so yun uh, there was this guy who was uh, peddling dream cards on the street so parang sila naging curious now there was this one particular card na medyo silver ang kulay and both wanted it why? because it was uh, created by a I think wait, it was created by a scientist which uh, where he developed a formula called bus upper <laughs> in other words a breast enhancement equation <laughs> so both these girls wanted it especially si Miguto, okay she doesn't have those goods <laughs> <laughs> and so is Kinohata. <clears throat> so, parang sila naging interesado and then eventually nag-agawan sila nagkaroon ng naglabo-labo until sa na na-disarrange yung setup ng peddler. Now, he doesn't know which card is which. Anong tema ng card na yon? So, they had no choice but to to buy them all na. Both of them had to buy them all. So, and kasi Uh, they, they wanted to try it out which one is which kasi hindi nila matandaan which card it was kasi tinanggal sa tinanggal sa casing so they all tried it out and and the bottom line of all the dreams they got was uh, was how to enlarge their enlarge their opais <laughs> if they have one <laughs> okay it was a really funny episode All right, it's a really funny episode. So eventually, yeah, you know, na bal na ane na sayang ang pera nila pareho. So they went, so they went their separate ways, and um, yeah, basically that was it. That was that episode. That was how that was how the episode ran. Okay, so a new group was introduced now, in, in a funny way. Okay, in a funny way. Now I don't know how this group will figure in this arc, so we gotta we gotta watch. We gotta watch the the last few, the last several episodes of this uh, of this season. Oh, so, wow! Okay, for the first time, to ano aga ano real gun made me laugh my ass off. <laughs> so, to ano aga ano real gun season 3 episode 18, thumbs, two thumbs up. <laughs> okay. It was a really funny episode. Grabe. Natawa ako talaga na gusto sa episode na to. Uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good um, veering away from the usual action-packed conspiracy theory, um, serious business type, serious business type of episode that Real Gun is the Real Gun is known for. Okay. Talagang nag over the top sila rito when it comes to comic relief. <laughs> All right, that's it. Well, it's a typical dilemma in real life. Okay, it's a typical dilemma amongst young girls. Na bakit uh, at 13, 14, 15 eh, wala pa silang wala pa silang hinaharap. <laughs> it's a big dilemma. Okay, it's a real dilemma amongst young girls, the mga teenage girls. Okay? I've, I've seen it. I was dumating nasa pagka teenager, nakita ko na sa mga klase kong babae. Bakit nung ngayon hindi pa lumalaki to? <laughs> <laughs> ganun ang ganun ang uh, reklamo ganun ang reklamo nila even in college I, I was uh, I, I got 
I got a few female friends who are, who are complaining that or, or complaining the same thing or complaining this same thing and that was college okay so again to Aro Kaga on Oregon season 3 episode 18 two thumbs up okay now uh so what's next it's episode 19 I well don't give me any spoilers all right but I simply can't wait for the next episode Let's hope that we're gonna have some inkling of what of how this arc is going to turn out. Okay? But I got uh, I got a few words for uh, I got a few words about uh, the new uh, the new OP. I listened to it a few times. <clears throat> the new OP. I don't know. It only captures half the impact of uh, the opening credits of uh, the new arc. The, the, new, the opening credits for the new arc. I don't know. Uh, it's, 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 just my, it's just my observation. 